Now, it's two years since the Syrian uprising began, and in that time, thousands of innocent people have paid a terrible price. Last week, Five News reported on the plight of more than a million refugees who fled the country. We visited the Zatari refugee camp, which many Syrian families now call home. Well, I'm joined now by the comedian Dom Jolly, who's just returned from visiting that very same camp. Great to meet you tonight, and thanks for coming in. Thanks How was it? Me. It was, well, as you'd expect, pretty traumatic. Um, what I found interesting, actually, was I assumed that all refugees, Syrian refugees in Jordan, Jordan's quite a small country, six million people, and they estimate that there's going to be a million Syrian refugees in Jordan alone by the end of the year. And it seems, the situation seems to have had some sort of tipping point with people just pouring over now. So the camp had 130,000 people, even though it was only set up in July. But You've I likened thought, it to, to the size of Glastonbury, the music festival. Yeah, I, I, it, was, it was weird. When you're there, you can't really get a... I was trying to think what a town of 130,000 people was in Britain. But actually, Glastonbury is a good example. Imagine just setting up Glastonbury with all the problems of loos and food and all that. But on top of that, not wanting to be there mm -hmm. and just being stuck for, with no discernible end to it whatsoever. But I thought what was interesting was I assumed that was the main problem. But actually, two-thirds of refugees in Jordan are not in camps. They stay in host communities, which means they're dotted all over the place in neighborhoods where they don't know anyone. In, yeah, I met one family of nine in one room. They didn't want to be filmed because they were scared about repercussions. And that's even more difficult for them because at least in the camps, they're with people they know and kids, for instance, can play with each other. Yeah. So it, it's a really desperate situation. And I know it's tricky at the moment. There's been the budget and mm. comet relief, but I, I saw the good they do and they really, they do need the money. Now, of course, you speak from the heart because you've got very big ties to the region. You were brought up, weren't you, in Lebanon? I used to visit Syria all the time and you love the country, don't I, you? So... I honestly think, people sort of refuse to believe this, but Syria is my favourite country in the entire world just for beauty and for, for travelling in. And the irony is when I was a kid, I grew up in the civil war in Lebanon and I remember going to Syria to sort of escape troubles in Lebanon. And I remember crossing the border and thinking, oh, we're, we're all right for a bit. And now the exact opposite is happening. I met 15-year-old kids who had just come over the border, and even though they hated being away from home, they were just relieved that they weren't being shelled. But they were still flinching when planes went overhead, and it's the kids are really, really, you know, whatever your view on the political situation, yeah. kids are innocent, and they need the help. You were there, say, the children were looking at footage of you now with a whole load of very lovely little children. Uh, how, how are they? How are they managing to cope with being displaced and seeing such horrible things happen to their families? I, it, you know, you hear some terrible stories. The one thing I really sort of took hope from, which I didn't expect, was actually I expected all the kids to be, if that sort of thing had happened to me, I'd be so traumatized. But actually when I was there, I was doing a piece to camera, and the first thing the kids did was, as kids do all around the world, was get behind the camera and do the donut thing, which is, I sort of assumed they wouldn't, but it actually was a really good sign, because it meant that they were being kids. And that's what Save the Children's really trying to do, is allow these kids to have a childhood. So what can we do to help? You can donate at the moment. And I know everyone's asking you to donate all the time, but this is a particularly difficult time because there's so many refugees coming in and they're really playing catch up. So you can go to the DUC website. 50 quid will feed a family for two weeks. 25 quid will, you know, get bedding and stuff. It's anything you can give. And I saw what Amsterdam, it goes straight there and they do an amazing job. So Money well spent. Yeah, I know people don't like celebs coming on and telling them to do it, but... Sorry, I'm doing it. And, uh, I'm... You're all right. You're an exception. Don't Thank Jolly. you. Very Thank kind. you. There you go. <laughs> Thank you very much for Thanks joining us tonight.